Hey, welcome back. Um, I'm going to keep working on the same song that I posted in the last video, the song that's based entirely on a riff. And uh, I've got my first pass in there. I've panned it all the way over to the left. My new guy's on the right. And um, we're just going to see what we come up with. I want to have a very different tone for the second guy. Um, the first, the first sound and here I'll, I'll go ahead and play just just a bit of it here's the intro <laughs> uh it's very thick and dark and rock and roll and les paul sounding so now i've got my jazz master <laughs> apologize for tuning but I never apologize for tuning so I'm using the line 6 HX and uh, I've got a patch called reverb pad which is just a real long reverb I think that's a plate uh, it sounds platey to me and then I have a uh, digital delay that's really just one loud repeat and a couple of others but I've also got it set to an expression pedal where I can go from that much feedback to something that hangs out a really long time. Just for vibe. You can hear it's got a little bit of a wiggle in the repeat. So uh, I'll turn those both off to play the riff. I, I will double the riff in the intros, um, intro turnaround, solo section, and outro, and I'll probably double my chorus part from the first guitar as well, which was the... <laughs> with our ninth chords, our add nine. So yeah, let's uh, let's just let's see what happens. Turn my click on. Here we go.
gonna stop there. It was so good up to that point. Uh, I just I made an extra hit um, in that bridge, so I'm gonna just punch in right in, in that gap there. Correct chord would help. Something that's a little tighter to my first part. because I'm totally dry here. Oh. Yeah, Spoon Man, fun riff. Uh, so there's a couple spots that I just remember from playing where I wasn't right on top of the other guitar, and uh, one of those is in the solo. I hit a downbeat of the second time of the riff on this guitar and I didn't on the first one and I kind of like the space of not having it there because there's going to be a solo on top of it so let's find that spot and I'll punch it. <laughs> right there uh, so the top of the solo <laughs> The second time that line comes around, I did not hit the low D note before sliding up to the C. I, just, I started the second bar by sliding up to the C. So I'm going to do that again on this guy so that they're, they're matched well. <laughs> Pro Tools, so there is a, it's just super easy to punch in one little spot, stop playing, and then drag your punch back over. I did the same thing in the outro, except I made the opposite error. I, I didn't play the downbeat on one guitar, on this guitar, while well, my first guitar was playing the downbeat. Uh, the second time through, so listen. That bow the second time was on my first guitar only, so I want to hit that as well and do the same thing just to match it with this guy. That's all the far, further I need. I don't. I don't need to be real careful about things ringing out when I'm punching in like that. Particularly because this, again, no reverb, no delay. It's dry. Uh, my chorus is pretty much the same. Uh, they're they're stereo parts, even though the tones are different. I kind of like mixing it up like that, making it sound like there's two different guys on stage, one on each side of the stage, playing in their own way that same riff. So they're playing the same notes, 
Uh, it's the same pocket because it's the same guy, really, but I'm using um, a Les Paul on one side with humbuckers and uh, a bit of a reverb. And on the other side, I'm using a Jazz Master. And I, I, honestly, like, I didn't change much pedals. I've still, I've still got the Nobles going. I turned off the reverb, but I'm still going into the same amp and cab. Um, going from a Les Paul to a Jazz Master, even when the rest of the chain is is similar, uh, is a huge difference. You know, particularly on the cleaner side of of, of distorted tones. You know. <laughs> Like, yeah, there's overdrive there, but you hear the guitar through it, you know. So if I play that on the Les Paul, it's going to be a lot, uh, lot different sounding. So the two parts are going, they're the same, and I've got them panned, but the tone is different, which I think is really cool. I, I, didn't, I don't like doing perfect exact copies. Um, I'll always try to sneak some difference in, unless it's specifically requested that they're identical. So anyway... There's two guitar parts working together. Um, oh, let's check out the bridge because there is a uh, that line on my first guitar. I'm actually playing a counter melody to that that goes up instead and still works. So check check it out. I'll just solo the two guitar tracks and they're panned hard you probably can't tell that very well on YouTube um, I'm recording on my phone but uh check it check it out without the without the track or the vocal and I'll, I'll mute the click again <laughs> It's kind of chaotic at the end of the bridge until it's it's all tied together with the the five chord the one time in the song that appears um, there's that bit of like we don't know quite what's happening it might be falling apart and then build into the chorus and it all comes back together I think that's really cool and it adds an element of uh, excitement to the track you know um, that's the thing I like about the Rolling Stones is that there's nothing technically crazy about what they're doing. It's not like, hey, listen to how much I've practiced, but they've got this groove and this vibe that sounds like it might fall off, like a train that might fall off of the tracks at any point. So that's kind of what I was going for in that moment. And again, I'm, I'm not like thinking about all this stuff some of the things i have planned i have a loose roadmap but i'm also just sort of listening and letting that carry carry where i'm going so anyway there's a second track uh or a second guitar part on that track thanks for checking it out